Hey everyone, welcome back to another Racerman Extreme video. Today, I have a tutorial for those of you with old mini DV cameras like this one. I'm going to be showing you how to take your modern game capture setup and get those precious tapes converted into legit modern files. Let's get started. To start, simply unplug that console or PC from the HDMI capture card I presume you already have. Keep the end of the HDMI cable that normally goes in your console or PC handy because you'll need it to connect it to another device soon. If your capture card doesn't do HDMI, you aren't completely out of luck as I have an alternative for you later on if your camera is compatible. Next, you're going to need your camera to have a functioning VCR mode. This is a $40 Sony DCR TRV20 I found on eBay, originally listed as four parts. I wanted to gut this one to replace the LCD and various other parts due to further tampering gone wrong in later years of the original one we have using this one. It turns out that it was actually easier to fix this one. It was spazzing out due to the tape door having a loose screw inside, the metal that keeps it from going too far out like that. Once I swapped out the LCD backplate, this one, to give it a piece of hours, the original one landed in my closet once again, broken forever in several pieces. But hey, this is nothing new as my DCR SX45 camera replaced it, helped start my channel, and then the SD card slot died before I upgraded to my AGX 180 used to shoot this video. Well, second one, because Taz broke the first one. Crazy how it fits all together with my channel, right? Anyway, once you have a mini DV camera of some kind that doesn't eat the tape, you'll need one of these. It's an RCA composite and S video to HDMI converter. All you have to do is pick between using the S video uh, male cable on it or the yellow female cable. If you pick S video, you'll need a headphone jack to get audio as S video is simply standard video, no audio. Simply plug a three and a half millimeter to RCA composite audio conversion cable like this one into the camera and the converter here. If you decide to use the yellow one instead, make sure you're converting from the three and a half millimeter audio slash video output port as seen here. Your camera may not have this port, so you'll need to try another composite solution if possible. Some cameras may have all three and using a male to male cable for each color will work too. This is your only option if your capture card doesn't do HDMI. I mentioned this option earlier as your only choice unless you can get a cable to convert S-Video to the yellow connector. Using S-Video paired with 3.5mm to RCA audio is how I prefer to capture video if I'm going with wired connections because S-Video is supposed to be higher quality per the manual of the camera right here. Also, I don't have a 3.5mm to RCA slash composite cable that carries both audio and video, just the kind for audio only. I may get one in the future that carries video as well. As for the little switch, Mine works in 720p mode better than 1080p because of various issues such as freezing picture, audio popping, the right side of the picture behaves oddly, just not a good time. Also, I don't want to upscale very much as that will mess with the result negatively since it's stretching an analog signal that was never meant to be HD. We also won't be configuring our capture software for 1280 by 720 anyway, rather a derivative of 480i based on the 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 aspect ratios Please base this on how your footage was originally shot. A cool party trick of the DCR TRV20 is the Super Laser Link system. You can simply connect an RCA composite to HDMI converter without S video support into the receiver, and you'll only need a power cable at most for your camera. This is great if you still daily drive your camera or just like to mess around with your eBay special like I do, as you can keep the ports from wearing out so fast, and there's a good chance that you never really use the infrared light used to send data, which means it'll last for a long time. Once you have your camera or infrared receiver plugged into a converter, connect that to your capture device. Next, navigate to your capture software. The technical side of things will matter, so pay close attention. I'm using OBS to unlock the ability to tweak settings as much as possible. In my case, my camera shoots 525 lines because it's NTSC based. However, this is often just the same as 480i due to some of the lines being invisible and 480i is either letterbox 640x480 or widescreen 854x480. Lines is a clear sign of interlacing which means you'll need to ensure that you can record 60 frames per second in order to maintain the smooth video trickery of 60 hertz interlays. Set your OBS settings to each of the following. 
Once you've configured OBS's backend settings, head over to the capture device in your scene. If you haven't added it already, make sure that you do so before moving on. Go to the video settings of the device as seen here. Click on the resolution dropdown, press custom, and pick 640 by 480 at 4 by 3 or 720 by 480 at 16 by 9 and remember to stretch it as seen here. There's no need to upscale to 720p for 16 by 9 content. That's it. Press record, right? Wrong. You got a few more precautions to follow. First of all, this is likely your streaming setup. You should ensure that you are able to retrace your steps to restore your higher quality settings for your future live streams and other video recording. And you probably have your microphone plugged into OBS ready to go. Mute it to prevent your 2021 conversations from ending up on stuff that could be as old as 1999 or whenever your footage was shot. Also, don't forget about muting your desktop audio and other audio inputs. You only want your capture card audio. Here's some test footage I shot on a tape I bought in a pack of 10 just a few days ago, brand new and unopened, and this was actually prior uh, to using any sort of cleaning tapes. I've also included some footage from 2012 of my deceased dog Tinkerbell, 2008 to 17, rest in peace. I was only 11 when I shot it. Timestamps will be on screen. Okay, now we're done, right? Yes, hit record on OBS and play on your camera in VCR mode and capture those moments on the PC forever. Be sure to leave a like on the video, get subscribed, drop a comment down below if you need help, visit creativeliferp.com, the best 5M server ever created, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.